So in this video, we're going to take a look at fractional indices or fractional exponents. Now, before we get on to the examples and some of that work there, let's just quickly think about something. So first of all, a square root, the definition of a square root is the number that multiplies by itself to make the original number. So if I had the square root of x times the square root of x, it's going to be x. If I had the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of 16, it's going to be 16. And of course, we know this works because the square root of 16 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So that is what a square root is. Now, let's think separately to that something else. What about if I had um, 16 to the power of a half multiplied by 16 to the power of a half? Well, I don't know what that is just yet, but I do know that the rules of exponents tell me I need to add those powers. So I need to add a half and a half together. So that is going to be equivalent to 16 to the 1, which is, of course, 16. Now, the only logical conclusion that I can draw from this is that it must be that the power of a half is equivalent to the square root symbol, okay? And that is where this is coming from. If I raise something to the power of a half, it means square root. And we can extend this on further to cube roots and roots to the fourth root or the fifth or any root, okay? And this box here is the most important part of this lesson. Anything to the power of a half is equivalent to a square root. But if I had a number to the power of a third, then that means the cube root, okay? So the number that multiplies by itself to make uh, three times to make that number. So let's just take a look at these examples um, here, right? So we've got nine to the power of a half. Well, that means square root of nine, which you can see already is three. Eight to the third means the cube root of eight. So we've got to think to ourselves, what number multiplies three times to get eight? And of course, that's two, because two times two times two is eight. This last example is particularly difficult, okay? What multiplies by itself four different times to make 625? And you'll be forgiven for not knowing this, but it's five, five times five, times five times five makes 625. So that is what's going on here. So let's look at some further examples and see if we can figure these out. Okay, so 81 to the power of a half, this means the square root of 81. Well, what number multiplies by itself to make 81? Nine, B. So this means the cube root of a thousand. So what number multiplies by itself three times to make a thousand? And of course, this is going to be 10. 10 times 10 is 100 times another 10 is a thousand. So the answer is 10. Now, C is particularly tr tricky. This has got a negative symbol as well as a, a half. So if we remember our negatives, it means kind of write it as a fraction. So this is equivalent to 1 over 4 to the power of a half. 4 to the power of a half means the square root of 4. So this is going to be 2. So the final answer is a half. Now, we can go further and we can see if we can uh, explore some of these difficult, challenging uh, questions here. So um, we can do this in a number of ways. So first of all, let's take A. And one way we could do this is to just work it out. So 4 times 8 is 32 and then divide by 2. Well, that's 16. So what I've got here is 16 to the half, which is 4 because the power of a half means square root, of course. Um, we can do this in different ways, though, as well, because what we could do with this one, well, I don't want to do 9 times 27. So what I could do is write all this as powers of 3. So this would be equivalent to 3 squared, that's the 9, times 3 cubed, well, that's the 27, divided by 3 to the 1, which is the 3. So what I've done there is I've swapped those numbers out. I've recognized that they're all powers of 3. Right, from there, well, we can use our exponent laws because that top line will be 3 to the power of 5 
because I'm adding those powers, first rule of exponents. And now I can use the second law. I've got a division sign there, so I can subtract the exponent. So it's three to the power of a four to the power of a quarter. And of course, I can multiply those things together now. So this is three to the power of one, which is three. So if I can't do the sum itself, I could be sneaky and use those exponent laws to help me. I didn't even need to use that fractional component there, did I? Okay, let's take a look now at some other examples. Now, 16 to the three quarters. So, so far you've not come across anything like this yet. Let's see if we can figure this out. Now, we could do 16 to the quarter very easily. So what I want you to think about is writing this as 16 to the quarter cubed. We know this is equivalent because we can multiply that three by a quarter to get the three quarters. So we're like splitting it into two pieces. Now, 16 to the quarter means what number multiplies by itself four times to make 16? Well, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So that bracket is 2. So what I've got here is 2 cubed. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And there's our answer. Let's try this one. 25 to the power of 3 over 2. So we're going to split this apart. We're going to say this is 25 to the half cubed, okay? Because 3 over 2 is a half times 3. And we can split that up using that third law of exponents. Well, 25 to the half means the square root of 25. And we should know that that is 5. 5 times 5 makes 25. So what we have here is 5 cubed. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So there is our answer for that one. Okay, let's just make up one other one to see if we can get this done. What about if I said 81 to the minus three quarters? So to make this even more challenging. Well, first of all, we are going to have one over 81 to the three quarters. From our previous video, we know that's our method of removing that negative exponent. Okay, from here, we can then split this up into its component pieces because we could say that this is 81 to the quarter to the power of three. From here, we now need to think, well, what number multiplies by itself four times to make 81? And if you don't know this, start guessing, start thinking. It's gonna be a small number. This one's gonna be three. Three times three times three times three is 81. So we're gonna have three cubed. And then finally, of course, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So my final answer here is 1 over 27. Okay, I hope this helps you to understand fractional exponents and to combine them as well with negative exponents.